Hello and welcome to EDB Flight Test 1. This is the test of the DB1, nicknamed the Orange, and its goal is to pass Mach 2. Its pilot is Chadwin Kerman. It is the first flight test for the EDB and uh, we hope everything works out for the best as Chadwin Kerman will have quite a daunting task ahead of him. The rocket behind him is an RL-10. It is simply the only engine that could fit on the, on the back of this particular plane. And so not exactly the ideal rocket, it is a second stage rocket, not really meant for sea level purposes, but it has sufficient thrust. And uh, the tank, the orange tank, has the um, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for it. As we see Chadwin Kerman getting his, uh, his instrumentation order here. Uh, it has 4 minutes and 10 seconds worth of fuel, equivalent to 2,400 meters per second at sea level or 4,200 meters per second in vacuum. And uh, the, the craft is ideally suited to the purpose of simply breaking Mach 2, but not much else because the engine will fire only once. It will not be relit once Chadwin Kerman has uh, got it going here and he's uh, he's got clearance to go and the rocket is lit calculate v1 speed is 223 miles an hour 100 meters per second vr rotation speed is 115 meters per second 257 miles an hour this is a very aerodynamically heavy craft but it is up it is up and the gear is up and uh, Chadwin is uh, making his turn towards the Pacific Ocean. It's, uh, this craft is of course taking off from Vandenberg Air Force Base, Vandenberg being the chosen site for the EDB's flight tests and uh, simply because of course Edwards Air Force Base was not available at this point. So uh, here we see the in cockpit view as uh, Chadwin Kerman gains altitude, needs to do that fairly quickly because because the engine is not suited to low altitude use. So he will gain altitude quickly and of course uh, flying immediately out over the Pacific in order to make sure that that any failure will result in a ditch into the into the water rather than a crash in land. Okay, and the uh, craft continues to gain altitude. We are past 215 meters per second and 7 kilometers. Getting above the cloud layer here. This is the very first aircraft for the EDB, the DB-1 it is called. Uh, it was decided not to go with the X designations for the experimental aircraft and going with the DB designations instead. As we see Chadwin leveling out to push for Mach 2 now, past Mach 1. Altitude above 10 kilometers. 12 kilometers now. Two minutes and 35 seconds into the flight and uh, we have 12.5 kilometers altitude, 487 meters per second, 1,090 miles per hour ground speed. Approaching Mach 2 now. And Chadwin Kerman and a DB1 has broken Mach 2, altitude 13,250 meters, 43,000 feet, 602 and increasing meters per second. Mach 2 was at 590 meters per second. He has clearance to shut down the engine. The engine is shut down. The confirmed maximum velocity of the plane, ground speed of the plane, 
was 635 meters per second, 1420 miles an hour, Mach 2.14. And now Chavin has the much more difficult task of bringing this back to base without being able to relight the engine. Incidentally, about 20% of the fuel must be kept in the aft tank to keep the DB1 balanced. Uh, this fuel can be used in emergencies if large pitch changes are not expected, but as you can see from the return trajectory that Chavin is uh, going with here, uh, he is going with large pitch changes, and uh, that is safe as long as that fuel remains in that tank. The return to Vandenberg will take about six minutes, depending on how how much drag there is on this plane. Communication a bit garbled here. Descending through thirty thousand feet, ten ten kilometers and eventually below the cloud layer. The cloud layer is about 8,500 meters or about 27,000 feet, 26,000 feet. Uh, Chavin reports a little bit of difficulty controlling the vehicle without any thrust, but it seems like he's got it all right. Now passing Mach 2 isn't a particularly unique accomplishment and may seem trivial. However, for the Design Bureau, they want to make sure that they have their aerodynamics right for future endeavors. And really, speed is not the only factor here. And in fact, in the, in the future aircraft that will be designed in this series, uh, they are going for novel applications rather than than simply aiming for space as quickly as possible and uh, discovering the properties of aerodynamics as we can see the straight wing DB1 very similar of course to the X1 uh, has uh, succeeded in passing Mach 2 just as the X1 did uh, different engine different uh, structure altogether but uh, very heartening to see the aerodynamics working out quite well here and we will see more novel applications of aerodynamics in this series before uh, before there is any attempt to make any SSTO or orbital spacecraft but that is certainly a goal and once we have our aerodynamics straight we hope that will be the case. Part of the impetus for for this flight testing is, of course, the the Hyperion shuttle, which was uh, so badly off course on re-entry that uh, EDB decided that perhaps a little bit more experimentation should be would be advisable, and I think we can all agree with that. The Hyperion shuttle, of course, was not operated by the EDB, but by an outside agency that contracted for it. But uh, in any case, uh, the EDB would like to be able to compete with such such designs, and so this will be the beginning of that effort. And so far, uh, Chad Van Kerman has done an excellent job uh, making his approach to uh, Vandenberg, and uh, the runway is uh, at a 45 degree heading, and so uh, really the runway is misnumbered should be a four and seven nine here and so uh, currently still over the Pacific Coast over the Pacific Coast of California Chabin Kerman making his way back to Vandenberg Air Force Base at some point if the EDB can uh, relocate its testing to Edwards Air Force Base that would be of course ideal but for now, Vandenberg will suffice. Operating in California, of course, is very convenient because the West Coast is prolific with uh, aircraft manufacturers and uh, a lot of expertise in aerospace engineering uh, on this side of the country. And so 
uh, EDB jumped on the chance to uh, do their flight testing on the West Coast uh, while it continues rocket operations on the East Coast, which is of course better known for, for that sort of thing. Okay. The, the DB-1 is now basically at its uh, lower limits on, on speed here. We recall that the rotation speed was 115 meters per second, and it is below that right now, though still safely above its stall speed. Its takeoff speed is quite uh, quite high, even for uh, even for a fighter like uh, the F-104 with a tiny airfoil. The DB-1 has much more substantial airfoil, so it's somewhat surprising that it uh, takes so much so much velocity in order to get it off the runway. Continuing to approach uh, Vandenberg as we are now past 9 minutes and 45 seconds into the flight. Continuous communication between the DB1 and uh, and mission control, of course. This is the first attempt. Chad Ben Kerman uh, was selected for his courage, though not necessarily for his engineering background in this case. So any any information that he could give to the engineers on the ground would be helpful. As we see landing gear deployed, and uh, Chad Ben making final adjustments towards the runway. Uh, Chavin reports that it's a little bit too draggy. And uh, he's retracted landing gear to avoid dipping below safe approach speeds. And so the landing gear is back up again. He'll put it back down once he uh, has restored the craft to a safe approach. And the landing gear is back down again. Certainly the Kerbals are highly trained in, uh, in piloting aircraft even if even if they don't have the engineering background to to diagnose issues with the aircraft. They uh, they have not only the courage but the competency to make uh, complete flights and test these aircraft appropriately as we see Chad Van Kerman making his approach to the runway. Touchdown, touchdown at 11.55, flight time. Uh, touchdown velocities, ground speed was 70 meters per second, 156 miles an hour. Braking looks good. Air brakes out. And the craft is at rest. The craft is at rest uh, 12 minutes 30 seconds into the flight and we uh, assume Chavin will want to uh, step out and take a few moments for the photographers. Thank you for watching this flight test of the DB-1 and we hope you'll join us for future flight tests in the EDB Aerospace Division and uh, with that this is the EDB signing off.